1450 FM 99.3 KNSI, Your Health on the Air with pediatrician Dr. Jill Amsbury from Centricare. Dr. Amsbury, it's great to see you again. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me again. You bet. The last time Dr. Amsbury was in, we were talking about seasonal allergies, but there's another thing that is very, very important, particularly when talking about our kids, and that is the use of digital devices, Dr. Yeah. How do we know what's going on out there with our kids? Well, I think we don't know exactly yet. I mean, what we're finding is that we don't know enough. Um, People are still trying to work on um, gaining some information and evidence behind, you know, uh, what what are the benefits and what are the risks of these digital devices? Now, having a good relationship with your children is absolutely paramount on so many levels of That's life, right? right? Yeah. But now when you have to deal with a competitor, right? Parents have competitors in the form of digital devices because they have almost taken on a life of their own. What is yesterday's luxury is now today's necessity. Okay. Um, And just imagine what life would be like suddenly without your cell phone. I mean, moms and dads, we understand the importance of having our life in the palm of our hand. Right. Even parents uh, can learn a thing or two from this conversation. I have to think about their own use of mobile digital devices. Dr. I know that, uh, as as you said, things are, um, we are learning more and more every day about the digital devices that are out there, what happens to people that use them. Can we begin by talking about blue light? Is blue light good or bad for us? Well, you know, what we do know about blue light is that it's not good for sleep. Okay. Um, so in particular, when we're talking about digital devices around evening time, mm-hmm. um, in the bedroom, an hour prior to sleep, the blue light is the problem. Okay. So it's the it's the thing that affects our sleep. Is it uh, like uh, you have a half an hour before you go to bed, you should be away from your computer? Is it an hour, two hours, what? Our current recommendation is an hour. Okay. So the screen should be shut off, no blue light, at least an hour before bedtime. All right, one more time. Screen should be turned off <laughs> how soon? That's right, at least an hour before bedtime. All right. Now, what about the fact that, well, I have to have my cell phone right next to my bed. Right. So there are a lot of different ways that you can approach that. So many people will say, you know, we'll have rules within the home that where the screens or um, phones, digital devices of any kind are plugged in at a certain time and left in a kitchen area or some um, universal space that is not the bedroom. Now, believe it or not, I'm a dad. I'm a grown up. So my phone is right next to my bed charging at night in case something happens and I need to get that very important phone call. However, I have to take my phone and turn it upside down, face down. Otherwise, that light keeps me awake at night. Exactly. Yeah, that's another great solution. And I think as adults, we're able to do that. Unfortunately for kids, that's not always as easy. True enough. Fortnite comes to mind. Right. Right. That's right. How old are your children? I have um, my oldest is eight Mm -hmm. and my youngest will be four here in a couple weeks. Well, four years old. Happy birthday. Here's your cell phone. (laughs) Right. That's right. Yeah. Well, that leads us to the next question because... Because we've all seen, my gosh, it looks like they're in first grade with a cell phone. Right. Now, I understand the part about emergency use, but that's not what happens, is it? No, not at all. Good intentions, maybe, but that's not what happens. Right. Not at all. How old, in your professional opinion, Dr. Jill Amsbury, (laughs) do kids need to be, should they be? I mean, come on, what does a six-year-old need a phone for? Right. I mean, I think that one seems pretty obvious, right? Yeah, Yeah, that that um, is unnecessary and really can be harmful. Um, There are cases, and I think... You know, there's not one age in particular where we say, okay, yeah, now it's okay. Um, It certainly depends on the kid, their responsibility level, and the um, involvement that they may have. You know, I have some of my um, friends and coworkers whose children are in activities, and now they're out and about, and they need to be able to, you know, contact contact their family. Mm -hmm. However, this is where that relationship with your children comes into play, mom and dad. Establishing the guidelines before the cell phone comes into play, you right? Think? Absolutely, yes. And as pediatricians, um, you know, we're very, um, we're we're cognizant. 
cognizant. Yeah. And uh, we think it's very important that families have a media plan at home. Right. So much so that um, the American Academy of Pediatrics has a website called healthychildren.org. Mm-hmm. And if you go to that website, you can actually create a media plan for your family. Um, we know with kids and any sort of behavior that we'd like to happen in our home that um, interaction with them is most important. Having them involved in the decision making is most important. And so having a full media plan that the whole family agrees on is very helpful. It's time for me to step in front of a speeding bus because a media plan for the family? Right. Come on. This is when my mom would say, Robert, go to bed. Right. Right? You can't stay up and watch I Spy on television. It's after 8 o'clock. Yep. That was our media plan. And then Robert goes to bed Darn and right watches I Spy, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I tried to listen, but I always fell asleep. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, in all seriousness, moms and dads are faced with things that I think most parents today never even thought of yeah. being a problem. Yeah. And and imagine this, because parents are inundated with the use of computers, your cell phone, tablet, all that stuff, but so are the kids. And in my opinion, I would think that kids need the chance to be kids and not be influenced by a screen. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, we have very compelling evidence to show that Young kids in particular are, you know, kids less than 18 months really shouldn't be um, getting screens at all. They don't know how to extrapolate that flat screen into their three-dimensional world. And so not helpful at all for those kids. Doctor, you have set us up because the next point of conversation will be, is digital use impacting the development of our children? I cannot imagine an 18-month-old child with a cell phone. That's right. But we see it, don't we? Absolutely. AM 1450, FM 99.3, KNSI. Dr. Jill Amsbury is our guest. She's a pediatrician at CentraCare. You are listening to Your Health. We'll be right back. AM 1450, FM 99.3, KNSI. Welcome back to Your Health. Our guest is pediatrician Dr. Jill Amsbury with CentraCare. Uh, Dr. Amsbury, you mentioned uh, in a previous session that we had my chart. If you are a patient at CentraCare and you are not registered and using my chart, oh for gosh sakes, uh, get on the stick. It is so easy, so easy. Again, my chart, and they'll help you at CentraCare the next time you're there. That's right. Right. Okay. Uh, We said at the end of the last segment, we talked about digital use impacting the development of children, 18-month-old kids and cell phone technology. I thought we had to worry about Teletubbies and (laughs) how much much screen time a, a child might be getting there or any other of the children's programming on the TV. Right. Yeah, I wish that were the case. It's gotten past that, hasn't it? Yes, it really has. Yeah. Well, what do we need to know about our kids and the screen, especially, my gosh, 18 months. Right. That just doesn't seem right. Yeah. Like I said, those less than 18 month olds, they are not able to, you know, take that screen and put it into their three dimensional world. So it's really not at all helpful for them. As we continue into the older age ranges, um, it's really we need to be very careful about what we're doing. So a lot of the apps that say that they're educational are actually, they're academic, Mm -hmm. but they're not educational. Our kids need to be learning executive functions, you know, the ability to communicate with other humans, the ability to have cognitive development, to learn how to focus on a task, um, develop social relationships, emotional relationships, and you're not going to get that from a screen. Why is that? What is it about cell phone technology or tablets that just suck us in. Yeah, well, they're made to be addictive for our children, and so they're made to tap and swipe, right? Did you hear what she just said, mom and dad, (laughs) grandma and grandpa? They are made to be addictive. So they are in control. That's right. And we're actually starting to see that even the people who are making these devices, those in Silicon Valley, are actually not letting their kids use the devices or the programs that they're making. But it's okay if your kids do. Right, right. Oh, my goodness. How do people sleep at night? Right. You know? So, again, these devices are made to addict your children, influencing their health and their behavior. That's right. Kind of sounds like tobacco to me. Right. Yeah. Or alcohol. And in some ways, it has a similar response. With dopamine, Mm -hmm. right? Right. I have read just a little bit enough to be really upset about this, you know, and and we have no idea what is going to be happening 
a generation from now, two generations from now, three generations from now, what we're doing because technology is not going to stop. Right. And a lot of parents are concerned that if they don't give their kids the devices early, that somehow they'll, you know, get behind in school while the other kids will be ahead in their, you know, device abilities. Well, but the programs are made so simple yeah. that they'll be able to learn it later on. I, I would think, suggest too. it may, in fact, be the opposite. Correct. Your yes. kids probably will excel in school without those cell phones. Right. I always tell parents, you know, you think about the difference of a child watching a ball bounce on a screen mm-hmm. versus a child taking the ball, feeling the ball, bouncing the ball throwing the ball and the different um, interactions mm-hmm. with that ball that they have in the three-dimensional world. It's just it's just not comparable. We talked about this the other day at the Granite City train show. Um, you know, you have children that can build things. They can use their imaginations, right? They can develop these cognitive skills. They can talk with their parents while they're doing this work or playing with other children. Right. On the other hand, if their face is stuck in a phone, that does not happen. Correct. The the developmental skills that we're talking about here are so critical. If they're not developed at the age of 18 months, two months, whatever, do they ever get a second chance? Yeah, I mean, they get a second chance in some ways. But we know that those early years are the most critical years for brain development. Um, so it's going to be a lot harder later on. I've, uh, and this was a long time ago where people who didn't know how to crawl when they were children, right, have to be taught how to crawl as adults. Yeah. Imagine what adult, what, what children would be missing and may have to go back and relearn just basic cognitive skills that you should have learned as a child. It should have just come to you. That's right. Yeah. We talked about parents and the relationship that they have with the kids. I always think... Uh, and it, it, it took me a long time to realize this, but now that my children are older, now is the time for me to be their friend, right? Yeah. Um, when you are a parent and these kids are little and they are young, you have to be the parent. Right. They're looking for those boundaries. And so they're looking for you to set those boundaries despite their responses. AM 1450, FM 99.3, KNSI, Your Health with Dr. Jill Amsbury. She's a pediatrician with CentraCare. How often do you deal with children and issues with their phones, doctor? Yeah, well, it's a regular question that I get asked on a daily basis um, from all age ranges. So those little ones all the way up through teen years. You know, I, I deal with it and I answer those questions on a regular basis. How often do I deal with um you know problems from the phones i don't think i know cuz mm. i don't think we actually know exactly to what degree not yet yeah yep that's a scary thought coming yep. from a doctor isn't it yeah i think so um when we come back we're just going to take a quick break when we come back let's let's come up with a little bit of a checklist for moms and dads who may not really know or may not be comfortable with saying no to their kids maybe we can come up with a media plan <laughs> All right. Great. AM 1450 FM 99.3 KNSI. Again, Dr. Jill Amsbury, our guest. She is a pediatrician with CentraCare. You are listening to your health. We'll be right back. AM 1450 FM 99.3 KNSI. Welcome back. Our final installment of this edition of Your Health with Dr. Jill Amsbury. She is a pediatrician at CentraCare. Folks, we're talking about screen time, you and your kids and their screen time. As a matter of fact, this applies to adults as well, I would think. That's right. Dr. Jill Amsbury, you mentioned something earlier, developing a family media plan. I about fell out of my chair when I heard that phrase. We'll get to that here in in just a moment. But what are some of the things that you are seeing dealing with as a pediatrician when it comes to screen time and kids? Yeah, so there is some actually there's some good evidence of sure. um, complications from oh, screen complica- time okay. outside of the just cognitive development, right. social development. But we were saying there are some good things True. Yep. right that that come from all of this screen time. Yep, yep. So there are there there are some educational programs um, that can be helpful in short. Like quantities. math, math games, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but what again, it's important to know which ones might be helpful and which are not. Okay. So, for example, just because it says that it's a math game right. doesn't mean that it's actually going to be good for your child's brain development. Could be marketing. Absolutely marketing. And 99% of those apps are marketing. Well, and think about what Dr. Amsbury said earlier these apps are built to be addictive to your children. It's crazy to me. 
Developing a family media plan. What are some of the most important things, doctor, that we need to be thinking about? Well, we as parents, the very first thing that we need to be thinking about is making sure that we're setting a good example for our kids. So that alone is causing our kids to be more interested in screens. Our face in the screen, they see that and they put their face in the screen. Too. Go to dinner sometime. Right. Right. And you'll see grown up adults not saying a word to yep. one another. Yep. That's very sad to me. Yes. Um, and, and where are those like... I don't believe that the kids are the only ones that are being affected. I think it's messing up our communication skills, even with grownups, yep. right? Um, okay, so a family media plan. First of all, set a good example for your kids. Put the phone down. Right. Don't use the phone when you're in the car. That's right. Yeah, and those are you know really good ways to start. Other ways to start would be to you know have rules about media at the at the table at the dinner table so we know that in general just having a family dinner mm-hmm. is important for academic cognitive development um so putting those screens away at that time is very important um as a family you can determine you know special times where you feel like digital devices are not necessary so some families might say we're not having any screens in our home unless we're going on a trip um, some families might say, well, because of school, you can have it for your academic needs, but that's it. M- most families, and our recommendation is that you don't have any of the digital devices ever in a, in a bedroom okay. just because they're, not, they're good, not good for sleep. It's as simple as saying, hey, this is where our charging station is. It's out here in the kitchen. Everybody charges their phone right here. That's right. And some people will even have scheduled set-off times, so shut-off times. Mm-hmm. Um, So 8 p.m., no more digital devices or a certain day where you go um, device free or screen free. We've had conversations here before uh, with some other doctors about other things that are affecting our kids. Vaping is one of them. And right right up there with these vapors, uh, the the marketing aspects of all of these things. Very similar to apps, aren't they? Right. Well, kids are really easy to market to, yeah. right? Because they're vulnerable. And so... Um, think about Red Ball Jets. Think about PF Flyers. Think about Erector Sets. Think about that banana seat bike that you wanted as a kid. You absolutely had to... Think of Nike. Who right. didn't want to have Nike shoes back in the 70s, right? right. It all it all comes together if you start looking at these things. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So they're easy targets. They're mm-hmm. easy targets for we media. Were. We right. Were. And now we have um, our teenagers who are on digital devices, and they're not only easy targets for the media Mm -hmm. or for marketing, I mean, um, they're also easy targets for anybody else who wants to um, uh, prey upon upon their vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah. How do we know what's on these apps, doctor? We don't always know what's on the apps, and that's why it's important for parents to be involved. Well, I go back to this uh, back to this vaping thing, right? Where we hear all these fancy schmancy names, va- uh, dragon's blood, et cetera, et cetera. So these apps may say one thing, but right. they may do something completely different. Absolutely. There are apps that look like a calculator, so parents don't know. They think it's a calculator app, and then you go into it, and it's actually, you know, a more secretive social media app. Well, doctor, uh, again, setting up a family media plan, should moms and dads try to come up with it on their own? Should they give Dr. Jill Amsbury a call? Uh, I hate to say it, but maybe go online and see what some of the advice is there. Right. You can always call your primary provider and they can help you help guide you through it. Again, um, healthychildren.org has a great um, media use plan. If you go to healthychildren.org and you type in media use plan, um, they'll walk you through it. You can print it and keep it. And, you know, everyone in the family, including the parents, can sign it. But what we know is if the whole family is involved, including parents and kids, you're going to be a lot more successful. What about obesity? Yeah. diabetes, all of these things. Kids need to go outside and play. Absolutely. So do parents, by the way. Absolutely. And that's where we get a lot of our screen time recommendations is from uh, risk of obesity. So we say in those kids that are you know two years old, they should have only one hour of screen time per day because a lot more two than... Two years old? Doc, what's on a screen for a two-year-old? Right. Yeah. So TV programming, Sesame Street, things like that, right? Which Actually, the PBS stations are probably some of the better stations that your kids should be watching. A lot safer. Mm -hmm. Certainly don't give them a cell phone. Right. Okay, so uh, I remember when 
uh, transporting the family to and from, we would play, you know, spell your name with the, with the uh, traffic <laughs> signs, right? The road signs. Right. Then uh, video screens came into being with the van, right? right? What do you see there? Uh, are, do you see any disadvantage to popping a movie in other than the fact that, you know, windshield time is a good time for conversation? Absolutely. I mean, I think windshield time is a great time for conversation. There are a lot of um, fun and interactive things that you can do in the car. You can also look out the window mm-hmm. and see the sights. If look you're on at a, the cows, we yeah. would say, watch for cows, watch for cows. That's right. Now, as a parent myself, do I use them on occasion when we're on long trips out west? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but in general, we're trying to create kids who experience the trip that we're on, um, not the screen that's in front of them. Uh, There's a television commercial for some insurance company where uh, mom is driving and there are bears or something all the way around their vehicle. And she goes, hey, look, kids, nature. And the kids don't even look up from their screens. They go, wow. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, That's a very telling commercial. Absolutely. Dr. Jill Amsbury is our guest Develop a family media plan, folks. Uh, And again, realize we don't know. We don't know what's being done to our kids right now with all these screens. That's right. Less would be more. Yep. Right? Absolutely. Dr. Amsbury, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. AM 1450 FM 99.3 KNSI. Dr. Jill Amsbury, pediatrician with CentraCare. You have been listening to your health.